Tanya was absolutely a firecracker. She was the center of attention. She was the jokester. She's the one that would start the conversation with a, you know, in a party, a lot of people around. She never met a stranger. She was missing her shoes. Her clothes were dirty. There was a blue towel that was next to her body that appeared to have blood on it. It looked like she had been disposed of, like a bag of trash on the side of the road. I remember it's 12 p.m., March 18, 2020, we get the call that, you know, he's coming out of his work in his truck, and it was go. And so the two investigators that were dressed up as patrol officers, they pulled him over. When he got out, Danny pulled up behind him, Danny Harnett, and said, hey, we have something we want to talk to you about at the police station. Will you come with us? And the thing that struck me was when he got out of his truck, when Daniel Wells did, well, he's six foot seven. You know, he, he was humongous. He was just this giant. And so we got back to the police station. Let's cut the chase. So that young lady that showed you a picture of right. New Year's Eve, 1984, going 1985. January 1st, early morning, 1985. Okay. She's found dead on the side of a road. And I have the evidence but you're the one that's there. Oh. I have irrefutable evidence that you're there. You're hanging on every word, and you're, you're, you're understanding that it's this dance, literally, between good and evil. So there was a, a level of, like, excitement that you could feel. I can't describe the tension of sitting there and watching them interrogate Daniel Wells. You know about DNA? Yeah. DNA is actually just a positive, but more not more positive fingerprints. Right. So I can prove to literally one in 700 billion chances you were there. We we're not asking if you're there. Your DNA is at this scene. I've never hurt anybody in my life. That's what's, I mean, it, I, I've had one night stands and stuff before, but it's it's like. Have you had a one night stand with her before? No, I don't know her. I'm telling you, I do not, and I recognize her. I don't know the name. I knew what kind of questions they were going to ask him and how they were going to try to back him into some corners. We're starting it over again, but we're going to end up in the same place because we're not here by accident. I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm telling you, saying that you weren't there does not work. I can prove you were there. It's just, I don't, I don't know if someone I had sex with or, or what, but I just, I, I don't, I have never hurt anybody. It's, it's what I'm saying, it's just, it's blowing me away. We have sat in this room with monsters. Well, so we know. Uh, and we're not feeling that with you. I'm not a monster. And this is the moment where things are coming to, you know, a head. My heart was in my throat. It started to begin. Her friends had left her, and she wanted a ride home. And you know, we went by, my, went by my house, and we had a few drinks and stuff, and it just escalated from that. I hit her in the head and knocked her out. And it, it, it was dramatic. Well, and it killed her. And then just to finally hear that moment where he, for the first time, confesses this evil, dark secret that he had was just, I, I can't describe the, like, the emotions. It, it didn't really quite feel real.
being able to watch Wells alone in that room and call his sister and call his coworker and tell him what happened. You could just see Wells just realize, this is my last day as a free man. Hey man, I need you to listen to me about this. I'm, I am did something 35 years ago and I'm down at the Pensacola Police Department. And um, I was, I committed homicide. They got my DNA. I'm accepting responsibility for it. I should have come clean about this long time ago. It does, yeah, it's better than them finding out the news. I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in prison. He was seeing his life go away as he knew it. And it just is, and it's something that's very raw and, and visceral, and you can't believe someone would do something like that, much less you would be there for the moment where they confess. It's kind of overwhelming, realizing that we finally know who killed Tanya.